Good afternoon, my name is Yoshikawa. After the disaster, it's been three years since that crisis. In this interim period, a lot of recovery work has been underway. And fruits of that work are being produced steadily, but at the same time, there are people who are forced to live in difficulty, the residents of Fukushima. I do hope that uh, they can have normal lives restored as soon as possible. That is my sincere wish. Now, from a standpoint of a scientist, I would like to give the following talk. What is a scientist? It uh, may not be entirely clear because there are various types of scientists. There are different sciences and there are different roles played by different scientists. This crisis, I would like to call this a crisis. There was this tsunami disaster and a nuclear power station accident. So to this disaster and crisis, what kind of uh, contribution should the scientists be making? What kind of efforts have scientists been making? My conclusion is that the work has not been sufficient on the part of the scientists. So that is what I would like to cover in my keynote address. When we think about scientists, simply put, this is the society. Society has many experts professionals. Almost everyone has some area of expertise, and they are playing their roles. There would be educators, physicians, nurses, uh, and there are also judicial officers, politicians, and administrators. These people are supporting the society, a modern society today. When you think about this, these special practitioners, experts, in the background are different disciplines. For example, physicians are supported by medicine, and nurses nursing studies, and both physicians and nurses study life sciences. In the case of engineers, they study engineering studies. And organizational managers, they study business administration, farmers, agriculture. And uh, administrators, they study uh, administration um, studies. And different disciplines, there are different sciences and disciplines supporting these experts. And scientists are these people in this uh, outside of this circle, and they are in search of the truth in their disciplines. How can you understand nature and society? And they conduct uh, search uh, research to try to make a discovery of truth, and they study at the educational institutions to foster um, experts, and these experts are playing crucial roles in the society. So this is one way of looking at the modern society. This is applicable to any country. But I've talked about how the society is being supported. These are normal times. Normally, this is quite stable, this arrangement. The society is being managed and run quite well. But let's say that there is an accident, like the one we had in Fukushima. Many people would start to gather from various places, as well as from various disciplines and areas. Politicians needed to make a lot of decisions. Administrators and uh, physicians and nurses went to the site, and uh, engineers also, farmers. And there are also crisis managers came together to try to restore the situation together with the people on the ground. So unlike normal times, let's say that the engineers and physicians, these people do not meet on a daily basis, but they have to work together all of a sudden after a crisis. So simply put, what this means is that the things, because this doesn't happen normally in peace times, they're not used to working together. What they have to do in times of a crisis, you should be prepared, but unfortunately, we don't necessarily have that arrangement before a crisis. So this kind of a situation, how do you deal with the situation? These are the experts that are available. So if they work together well, then things should work well. But uh, there are uh, many dislocations, and they cannot always work together so well. This is the chronological order. 
this is the behavior of scientists in a crisis. First of all, to prevent a crisis, they try to remove factors that could lead to a accident. Many things are associated with science. For example, tsunami has uh, can be predicted with earth science. The size of tsunami could be predicted, and after a tsunami strikes, you can have accurate prediction of what would be the consequences. Sciences are working on that, and the area of nuclear energy, a lot of scientists made contributions to this uh, area. So many scientists can work to try to keep a accident from happening in the first place. But if there is an accident, there is the acute phase. There is the acute phase following an accident. You don't know what caused the accident, and there is a great confusion. So scientists do have a role to play here as well. And even after the matter settles for some time, you also have this chronological phase where damage continues to take place. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long, and then finally restoration period arrives. So this is how it is structured in a broad sense. When you think about this, you'd know that uh, in each of these phases, you need scientists. Let's say that there is a nuclear power accident. What happened should be estimated by scientists or experts, because it's only them that can do this. Experts who have learned science is included in these people who have a role to play. And in the progressing phase, what is happening should be analyzed by scientists. For example, dispersion and distribution of radiation should be done by scientists. And the impact on the human body uh, should also be done, uh, considered, and analyzed by scientists. There are different, different disciplines, but they should work together. And in the case of restoration, various sciences would be applied. So. You expect many scientists to make contributions in these different periods. After 3.11, it just so happened that uh, I was in charge of um, science strategy at the Science Council of Japan for the central government. This is uh, like a think tank. I was uh, belonging to this uh, group of about a dozen people. So we consider what should be the strategy going forward on a daily basis. But after the crisis, we came together to think about what should be done, what acts should be conducted. And uh, there are many scientists belonging to societies and associations, and they came together. And at that time, many uh, societies came together to seriously discuss what the kind of response should be made. And many reports were generated, and I gathered all those reports. I will not go into detail, but uh, there are various, well, this is the acute phase. And in times of um, acute phase, various ideas would come up. And there are many reports that were generated. They still remain today and into the future. This is right after the accident, so at the top uh, row. Uh, these activities are still being conducted. And specifically, our think tank, this um, uh, CRDS, uh, Strategic Center, uh, on the 29th of March, we came together this, to decide what we should do. So urgent studies should be conducted in the area of medicine, civil engineering, lifeline, and there should also be studies to assess damage. This is important for subsequent analysis uh, to the soil and the ecosystem and the human body. And you need also to develop a uh, recovery strategy and also think into the long-term future. So these are various things that we came together to think about. This is the research and survey. And how should we go about providing advice and how should we assess the damage? So we notified various academic societies uh, as to what contributions should be made. This is reconstruction strategy, and this is provisional advice. So as is mentioned on this slide in blue, this is what we should do, what we scientists should, be, should do at the uh, Center for Research and Development Strategy. 
It is said that there are 800,000 scientists in Japan working at universities, research institutes. Some of them are working in corporations. So how can they respond or participate in the response to the accident? Uh, these were discussed at our center. So it was a very uh, hasty, busy period that we experienced. That was the acute phase. Looking back, we had a lot of discussions, but did our, the outcome of our discussion reach the people on the ground or were we heard by the government? Did our voices reach the government? Well, no, I don't think so. Not 100% or even less than 50%. In many ways, it didn't work well. And we reflect back on what we didn't do well, because in the times of a crisis, communication amongst scientists and scientists and administrators and scientists and politicians and between scientists and people on the ground, we were not prepared for making arrangements for good communication between these stakeholders. We realized that. So personally speaking, we worked very hard. We went to the site and we came in contact with the government and we spoke with the politicians, many of us, but uh, they were not coherent these activities. So this is evidence of that. You might remember that the uh, investigation was conducted. And in this investigation, there was the diet uh, accident investigation report, as well as government investigation report and private sector investigation report. And there were different stakeholders. In the case of the government, the prime minister played a very large role. And there are different ministers in charge. And the operator uh, is TEPCO, as well as a reactor maker, which is Hitachi, Toshiba, and Mitsubishi. And there are different equipment makers. And there were also makers and companies providing maintenance services. And in the case of university, there were uh, nuclear power engineering, uh, machine engineering, and safety engineering people. These people should have been involved, but in the report, people who were cited in the report, it's only the ones that are in black letters, people in blue letters. Yes, they are mentioned in the report, but uh, as to what these people did is not uh, mentioned in these three reports, which might mean that these people didn't act. But these are the people who should act, nuclear reactor makers. They should know best about the accident of a nuclear power plant because they know the most about every component of a nuclear reporter, re a reactor. But uh, they are not mentioned in this report because there is no communication network connecting them with the investigators. There is no way to uh, let their voices be heard. In the case of scientists, of course, uh, nuclear power engineers, some of them have been appointed by the government and providing advice. But there is no collective society or uh, Science Council of Japan, which gathers all scientists in Japan, 800,000 of them. 210 representatives of scientists uh, constitute Science Council of Japan. And these are the representative people of scientists in Japan. So they should have been proactively involved in this effort, but they are not mentioned in this report. I know that these people worked very hard, but simply put, they don't know who to approach to, to get themselves be heard. In the acute phase, I open this Science, science Council of Japan meeting, but uh, uh, People, uh, when even if we make decisions, uh, those decisions cannot be con uh, conveyed to people in government. So there was no network. That's the impression I have. There are many sciences involved in nuclear power. Looking back, people in different areas, how much contribution did they make to nuclear science and technology? Uh, there was no formal communication lines. I was in this uh, engineering, design engineering and production engineering area. But even if you work on nuclear related matters, uh, it wouldn't be adopted much. We 
1978, we came up with the idea of, of making robots to be utilized in nuclear power plants, but uh, it was rejected and turned down. So various scientists made good ideas, but when it comes to nuclear power, there was no mechanism for them to be involved, to think together. There was no network to work together. So that's uh, something that we have to reflect back on. So. or corporations, they belong to different entities. And crosswise, they have different disciplines. For example, nuclear engineering, physics, uh, f uh, physics uh, and physicians. Uh, so they are divided in two ways. They are physicians and belong to this hospital. So they belong to medical uh, society, and they belong to a particular hospital. But these, this axis here, Based on the government's policy, how much budget and money would be allocated to university and what kind of equipment uh, would be provided to research institute works vertically. So these requests are requests for science-oriented policy. What kind of equipment is needed for promotion of science? For example, in recent days, a very large accelerator to be developed. These matters are decided by requ by scientists requesting the government and th them getting grants of uh, several tens of billions of yen. But these are specific matters with respect to science uh, policy. But uh, science for policy, public policy, well, that has to do with uh, what to do with the energy for Japan in Japan. That doesn't have to do with science. That's the politician's job to make a decision on. What is the current situation of energy? Uh, what is the energy supply situation around the world? What is the new sources of energy? What is the potential of renewable energy? What is the cost? These types of information are calculated by scientists. Objective, objective information, objective data will be created by scientists. So scientific knowledge should be provided to policymakers by scientists so that they can make a public policy decision. That's the, another role of scientists. This is not just science and technology policy. This has to do with how much investment to be made in biotechnology, how much money should be invested in accelerator. That is science and technology policy. This is done quite well, but other than that, many public policies are generated, economic policy, welfare policy, and all are accompanied by science knowledge. And so you need to provide advice in that area as well. And this is Science Council of Japan that I talked about. There is this council here. And let me repeat, there are these are the representative 210 scientists representing 800,000 800, scientists in Japan. They compile together scientific views. For example, should we should Japan continue with nuclear power generation from a standpoint of scientists? Of course, every scientist may have a different opinion. Certain scientists may say that they sh we should continue with the nuclear power generation. Others may not agree with that. Final decision will be made by the government. But to support that decision, you need the potential uh, of a nuclear power plant as well as safety information. That should be calculated and provided by scientists. So there should be dual advice structure to the government. This line is for asking for science and technology policy. But this one here, this line here, is to provide advice to the government for public policy. So objective and science, uh, subjective uh, advice should be heard by policymakers, and then they make the final decision. And uh, science uh, budget will be allocated as a result. But after this act, accident, we feel that this line was not strong enough. This line on the right-hand side was very strong because there are many committees asking for for budget. But this line on the left-hand side was weak, was not strong enough. And we have the Science Council 
of Japan. Uh, these are Academy of Sciences. In many countries, it is the Academy of Sciences providing neutral advice for public policy purposes. That's the role of uh, Academy of Sciences. So from these people, outside of Japan, they asked, what is happening to Japan? We received such questions very frequently after 3.11. So we started to know that this link is missing here in Japan. So this is my proposal. Let us have a solid, bold line over here so that uh, this Science Council of Japan could be strengthened and enhanced. So how can we do that? Maybe we can have a public think tank here. There is no such think tank here in Japan. In Japan, there are business think tanks, a certain corporation. If you want to make a profit in certain areas, there will be think tanks to provide advice. But uh, as a state, uh, independent of the government, uh, it should be neutral. Whatever government there is, whatever party should come in power, there should be a public think tank to provide advice to the government and around the world, especially in the United States, they are quite advanced, as well as the UK, as well as in Germany, they have advanced think tanks, public neutral independent think tanks. And uh, in Japan, we were quite lagging behind. We have something of that sort, inform only. And we also want to have a science advisor to the prime minister. We should at least have one advisor to the prime minister. This person would be providing advice to the prime minister. Because if many people provide advice to the prime minister, the prime minister would be rendered impossible to make a decision. We know that because after that uh, nuclear power accident, there were 23 people providing advice to the prime minister then, all of them scientists. And they all gave the prime minister different advice. And the prime minister at the time uh, dismissed all of them. Each one of them worked very hard, but it was not a coherent voice. So that was not heeded. Those voices were not heeded. So we want to have discussion at the Sounds Council of Japan. And one person would be the voice to provide scientific advice to the prime minister. This is how I hope would be arranged. Is this possible? We scientists didn't think of it this way. Scientists. This is the group of scientists belonging to corporations or research institutes uh, or with universities. And they have different functions. One is to conduct research. Of course, they also provide education, but research, because scientists want to make new discoveries to be helpful for the humankind. So that's a big piece of their work. And at the same time, they educate people. This is the chart that I showed you to foster experts, scientists would provide education. So this is the second mission of scientists. So these two are done quite well in Japan. But what about this piece here? Science Council of Japan, as well as uh, public advisors and public think tanks beyond their area of expertise or specialty. You're talking about the society at large, what to do with energy in the future. How should cities be developed in the future? And what kind of industries should be promoted in local regions? These are public policy. And uh, advice would be made for public policy. It should not just rely on physics or medicine. All kinds of scientific disciplines should come together to provide advice. So unlike these two pieces, you cannot disaggregate this one. Each scientist cannot work alone. You have to create the group, and you have, cons have to have consultation to provide advice that will be helpful for the society at large, as well as to the government and local governments. You have to provide useful information to these people. So this is the third mission of scientists. It's already been called for at universities as well from more than 10 years ago. But unfortunately, for some reason, this function neither at universities or at research institutes, as well as corporations, they were not functioning this role of providing neutral and independent advice. Unfortunately, let us think about this further. At universities or at government, as well as corporations and research institutes, there are many, many experts and scientists working in these entities. And scientists 
uh, belong to scientists uh, community in the, Japan it's SCJ in UK it's uh, a Royal Society and in UK it's the National Acad Academy of Scientists they belong to these ac academies or communities there is also engineering academy so this is a community of scientists being responsible for the whole separate from individual responsibility they have a collective responsibility as a whole such communities do exist so these scientists take part come out of these entities and they form a group, experts, the so-called experts and professionals. They do not only conduct research, they also act and they organize professional community. There is the bar association, medical association, there is the business association, and there is also the engineers association, there is the machinery uh, engineers uh, Society and Association, as well as Electric Engineers Association. So these are the professional communities. So each scientist or each professional, when they are belonging to these entities, they need to have loyalty to the institution that they belong to. So the, to their corporation or to their universities, they have to be loyal, they have to work for these institutions. But that's not all. Once outside of their entity, they move out of their organization they belong to. They then become responsible for the community that they belong to. They may belong to universities and corporations. They are responsible for these entities, but at the same time, because they are professionals, for example, nuclear scientists at universities as well as nuclear uh, engineers at the uh, uh, corporations, they are responsible for nuclear power. So they should come out to these communities. And there has to be agreement with these entities. How much can these nuclear engineers speak outside of their organization because there are certain trade secrets. So when they join a corporation, they have to uh, conclude an agreement and sign a contract. Such contracts do not exist in Japan, so you have to create such contracts. So the work of professionals and scientists, they have responsibilities both within the entities that they work in and outside as well. We had a vague idea of these responsibilities, but we didn't have a clear set of rules. So this is our proposal, some specific uh, structure that we are proposing. It's a bit difficult to see, but there is the Council of Science and Technology Policy with respect to science and technology policy. They make decisions on science and technology policy, and uh, policy that has uh, uh, science and technology input, they make decisions. And the chairperson is the prime minister, and there's the minister in charge of science and technology. And there are expert members. And the president of Science Council of Japan is also a member of the CSTP. Our proposal is that the prime minister's advisor should also be a member so that a third party independent opinion could be expressed representing uh, scientists in Japan providing advice to the prime minister. We want to have this kind of a, a structure. This dotted line is missing in Japan today. In order for this to function well, in order for this advisor to work well, we need many think tanks in Japan. And broadly speaking, there are three types of think tanks. One think tank would be Science Council of Japan think tank. It's 210 people. The resources are limited, so there is a limit to how much it can do. And because it's not strong enough uh, link to uh, real scientists, there could be a government think tank linked to SCJ think tank so that uh, local information and the decision making at the government level, they could serve as an intermediary to provide advice that could be useful for policy making. And that would be authorized at SCJ and to make advice to the prime minister. So th this is one path of providing advice. And CSTP, this, they also need to have a think tank because uh, there are many problems that they have to think about every day. So you need the brain. So as a group of experts, you need to have a think tank for Council of Science and Technology Policy. And corporations also need to have a think tank. In addition to making profits, 
uh, because uh, co corporations have uh, experts, they also need to provide advice. And this uh, prime minister's advice uh, would uh, put together all these inputs and aggregate them and provide advice to the prime minister. We want to create these paths to giving advice to the prime minister. So we are working on creating these think tanks. And by doing so, this diagram uh, is only talking about how advice could be provided. But what is most important is that uh, the will of politicians, that is poli political will, political will fairly communicated to the public. For example, science and technology policy, what does the government want to do? The expectation of the people, how is that to be communicated to the pro practitioners, scientists and professionals? The prime minister, when decisions are made, the decision should be communicated to people on the ground, including universities. And what kind of information is there should be communicated properly? And if there is a good communication network, then in times of crisis, this network could be utilized well, so that even in an acute phase, very quickly, response measures could be taken, quick decisions could be taken. I would suppose so. And if we create this kind of an arrangement, the distances between people would be shorter and people's advice would be communicated to the government more quickly. So we are in the process of creating this kind of a mechanism. And going back to the first uh, idea, scientists themselves must change. This is something that I am reflecting on myself. In the past, there was a separation between the society and scientists. Scientists should not be influenced by societal interests. Scientists should be independent from society. That was the idea that was advocated for long. But that, advo that um, uh, insistence was too strong so that scientists and society were separated too much so that scientists no longer listen to the government. So scientists were working independently, and the society was functioning independent of scientists. But the Science Academy, not all scientists must be advisors, but there should be a group of people who would provide advice. And they must understand the politics. And the politics uh, must also understand science so that there is a gradual shift in color, and there should be different types of people in between. So the science advisor is the person situated right in the middle, who is able to understand both spheres, who is trusted by people in both areas, and who is a person who can provide advice to people in both circles. We need this kind of a person. Person. And in many countries, there is work underway to develop this kind of a person, because in modern society, Science and technology has spread so much so that without an existence of a person like this, you should have a failure. And that is the agreement and consensus of um, Academy of Sciences around the world. So that's what we want to do here in Japan as well. So this is what we want to accomplish. I like this diagram because the society Here's the communication network, and the communication network should not be closed from the government to the people, from scientists to the government. It should not be one way. It should go in a circle. What is happening in nature? What are people thinking about? That should be understood well, and what should be done to respond to that? Well, there are basic scientists as well as applied scientists. And these people should work together to provide advice and make proposals. And there are practitioners who are having an impact on the society. So you have to have a loop of communication. When you have this kind of a communication network, then the mechanism would make an evolution, biological evolution, and the languages also make evolution, and there is a loop to support that evolution. In reality, 
in Tohoku region. This is a picture from Kesenuma. A sea wall is about to be built. It is true that uh, people who fell victim to tsunami, they are afraid of tsunami, so they want to avoid tsunami in the future. So this is 100 meters wide and five, 50 meters high. This is a very, very high seawall to be constructed. Here's a plan. And currently, the beach looks like this. And the, the plan is to create a very high seawall along this beach to prevent a tsunami. So you would be free from this fear of tsunami intuitively. But having said that, our food, various things, there are rich biological resources available here, but can we destroy all of that for the sake of building a seawall? According to Japanese law, when you create a structure like this, there is the environmental impact assessment law. You have to make sure that the environment would not be damaged before creating a structure, according to the Japanese law. But there are exceptions. If it is for an urgent protection of human lives, then this uh, application of the environmental law would not be necessary. So this is in the case of a uh, human life uh, preservation. So rather than protecting the environment, uh, it is true that uh, it's valid under the law to create such a structure for protection of lives. But uh, many environmental scientists are saying that it's not a good idea to build a seawall like this. This would destroy the environment, destroy fisheries and uh, agriculture, because the rainfall flowing into the sea is protecting the ecosystem in this area. But scientists going beyond legislation, we should be providing such advice to the government. But that's not being done. Yes, on a personal basis, many scientists are making such opinions, but that's not heard in a collective fashion. This is not from Japan, but this is a case from the United States, from your reference. As you might know, this is the case back in 20. 13 in February. This is one year. This is from 2010 uh, in February, one year before uh, Tohoku earthquake. They were uh, drilling a subsea oil field, and that uh, uh, burst, and uh, many people died, and there was a huge oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. We saw pictures of fish and birds uh, covered in oil, crude oil. And uh, the Medical Association in the United States, uh, there's the Medical Academy in the United States. And what they said is that to the National Oceanic uh, and Atmospheric uh, Administration, at the invitation of NOAA, uh, dozens of scientists came together to hold a three-day symposium. And what they said is that the oil's damage on human body to be assessed. So there's a thick report that was generated. And various views were compiled. And it's not coherent. But uh, such quick action was taken to try to prevent further damage. And uh, Director General of the Meteorological Agency was a female oceanic scientist. And she became a flag bearer. Uh, deploying scientists to stem the damage and impact on human body. That was a courageous action that was taken. But last year, in February, a new development took place. Yes, there were many developments in the interim period. The central company that caused the accident was BP. It's a British oil company, British Petroleum. That was the company that uh, triggered this accident. And litigation had been continuing, but finally there was the settlement. And the settlement money was to be paid uh, by BP. I think the amount was something like 3 trillion yen. And the UK, uh, rather, US uh, Department of Justice, the government of the United States, said that uh, a certain portion of that settlement money should be going into research of ecology as well as uh, human health over a 30-year period in the Gulf of Mexico. So that was a suggestion made to the National Academy of Science 
in the United States. And NAS is independent from corporations' profits. So there was this major debate of whether they would conduct the research for BP, a, a private sector company. But in the end, they thought that this was a very important case, uh, having an impact on human uh, health. So this is uh, research to be conducted uh, for 30 years. But they are not to be interfered uh, what research to be conducted. So NAS would make all the decisions with respect to what kind of research to be conducted. So this is the plan for the research. They would conduct R&D for human health and protection of environmental resources. And they said that they would also conduct education and training. This is a 30-year plan. So try to foster people. And they would also uh, develop new technology for environmental monitoring. And uh, environmental scientists and related scientists would collaborate because physicians and scientists do not meet very much. Physicians and engineers do not come together very much. But if they give them a certain agenda, people from disciplines and different uh, uh, specialties may have a chance of coming together. So for the science of tomorrow, for science that will be useful for so, so the society, they created this project. This was decided three years after that oil spill. And therefore, right now, what we are thinking about is that, yes, we don't know where the compensation money is coming from. But if such fund is to come, we have to generate such resources to conduct re to research on damage, damage on human body as well as ecosystem. Yes, it is a long term daunting research. But for the huge future humankind, this should be utilized. Uh, we have to have a project to conduct such research for the future of the humankind. This project has not uh, given birth yet, but it just so happens that I'm working at this CRDS. I'm thinking about this kind of a project. And I do hope that you would uh, render your cooperation to this initiative. I think my time is up. Thank you very much for your attention.